So, cheers. Cheers. Sitting here with uh, Chris Garden and the magic... I don't know how many square meters, it's quite small. It's two rooms. It's two rooms. How many square meters is it here at the Happer Distillery? <sighs> Only the distillery. 50? Maybe. Yeah, maybe 50. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We are surrounded by some mystical and geeky stuff, which you will <laughs> explain me in a second. Absolutely. So we are super proud to uh, bring over your lovely and delicious uh, juice uh, for Tender Spirits to Germany. I'm a big fan of it. First Thank of you. all, I mean, the taste killed me. I liked it because I thought this is what gin should be in a very elegant way. Juniper, juniper, juniper. Absolutely. And then in the beginning, I only know one person behind all of you. I learned it's five. The, the, the Happy <laughs> Five, I call them. Yes. And uh, I know Nick, but then I get in touch with the others. And then I learned, especially yesterday, that you are the mastermind behind the daily work of doing it. Absolutely. The, the, the piecing together of the, the puzzle, as it were, and making sure we, we have a consistent quality gin yeah. um, you know, out there. And working with Val and Nick you know, to create this amazing gin has been uh, a brilliant, fun journey. Mm -hmm. um, You know, uh, you know, Nick and Valor, the way that they combine flavors is just a pleasure to work with. And then to, to be able to, to make the gin mm -hmm. uh, is, yeah, you know, it's, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Look, I agree and I thought yesterday how crazy it is. And this is why <laughs> I like to have a little sit down with you and uh, explain it. Because I think it's, yeah, I think it's, um, you explained it yesterday quite well. So I, I, I also understand it, but I mean, I would love to understand Uh, how Happel is done, why you have chosen to go this path, the way you do it, very unusual. Absolutely. We, we wanted to take, you know, gin for us is all about juniper. And we wanted to put juniper back at the heart of gin. Uh, and to do that, we sort of wanted to capture more of the flavor spectrum of juniper. Uh, and to do that, we've got three pieces of equipment. We start with a, a copper pot still that we make a one-shot gin on. Uh, and that's really the sort of the base. That's where we start. And then we layer flavors from our vacuum still uh, and our supercritical extraction column onto that. So the vacuum still allows us to distill at a lower temperature. By distilling at 150 millibars, we reduce the boiling point of alcohol. We go from 78 degrees, which is what we're distilling on the copper pot still, to 40 degrees. So we capture lighter, fresher flavors that would be destroyed on the copper pot still. Um, and we actually distill six botanicals individually on the vacuum still, five of which we harvest from Heppel. So right on our doorstep, we harvest them fresh, distill them fresh, and we capture that light, fresh notes. It really adds a sort of zing to the gin, and it gives us that freshness that we, that we want to put back into, you know, we want to make the gin all about juniper, but we want to give it a sort of freshness. We want to make it perfect for a martini, brilliant in a basil smash. We want to add that freshness back to the gin. Uh, the, the six botanicals we distill, we've got Douglas fir, bog myrtle, lovage, black currant leaf, Amalfi lemon peel and the green juniper. And it's Maybe really. Amalfi lemon peel is not coming from. It doesn't sadly grow in the wilds of Northumberland. <laughs> a few more crazy summers, we might be able to plant a few lemon trees. Currently, and I'm not allowed to go to the Amalfi coast yet either uh, to harvest them, but. but um, You're not allowed. I'm not allowed. Okay. We, we need to sell a bit more gin first before okay, I can, I uh, I can I go on some it, trips. It, yeah. but, uh, but the green juniper really is the star of what we put through the vacuum still. It's in, it's in the gin in the biggest uh, quantity. Um, and it really, it gives us that little bit of, spe the, the, the flavor spectrum of the juniper that you don't get from the ripe juniper. Mm -hmm. You get the sort of fresh green apples, cedarwood, sandalwood flavors that you don't get from ripe juniper. And it really is, uh, through the vacuum still, it gives us this, this, this stunning freshness to the gin. Um, And then on the, on the, on the super critical, we apply high pressure. So we, we're, we're talking about 3,000 pounds per square inch of pressure. We apply that to, to ground up ripe juniper, uh, a little bit of heat as well. So at 40 degrees and 3,000 PSI, we create this super critical fluid. So it's not, a, it's not a liquid, it's not a gas, it's a liquid and a gas. So it can permeate space like a gas, but extract flavor like a liquid. Um, and it really squeezes the soul out of the juniper. We get this beautiful golden oil, and it's, it, it's, it's like the root, the needles, the berries, it's the full spectrum of flavor. And it really gives a depth to the gin. And it, it, it's, 
When you combine the pot still, the vacuum still, and the supercritical extraction, you just get this gin that sings. You know, it really, the flavor lasts, it doesn't disappear, it's full of juniper, it's full of sort of tropical notes. It's, that, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just a delicious gin. Mm-hmm. I hope, I hope, I hope people no, agree. I agree, I agree, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. So the three steps you decided to kind of create and I always, for me, I told uh, Walter as well, for me it's like stealing in a good way from this like culinarical kitchen, foodie, nerdy world to bring mm. in like vacuum and super critical extraction to, to just get the whole spectrum of what's possible with Juniper. Absolutely, that full spectrum. And, and, you know, gins nowadays have departed, I feel, from juniper. And the only way we could really make a gin that's juniper focused is to kind of innovate mm-hmm. and create a new way of putting more flavor into the gin. And, and by having the supercritical extraction and the vacuum still, we're getting that fuller spectrum mm-hmm. of juniper, mm-hmm. totally agree. Which, is, which is what we set out to do. Um, and it, it, it makes us relevant in the gin market yeah. by having more juniper in the bottle. Yeah. So for all these, like, uh, in a quick summary, first is copper still. Copper pot also still. Distilled me. This is a London dry gin, he explained it. Absolutely. Then yeah. you do the vacuum... Uh, vacuum distillation. Distillation, yeah. which makes it a distilled gin still. <laughs> yes, And yes. Then you add some super intense juniper oil. Exactly. Which you, it's very strange how you make it. And then finally, it's just a gin. So you, you go back just, in quality to make gin. the most quality gin. Not it, back. You don't no, get no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quality is always high. No, absolutely. You go back in legislation. It, it takes us yeah. five times longer to make yeah. than your average pot still gin. We've got the sure. pot still, the vacuum still, the supercritical, yeah. the harvesting of the botanicals, and the sorting of the botanicals. Yeah. You know. So could you, for for all the gin lovers and geeks and freaks, explain a little bit the, the single step? So. What's happening in the other room we show later? The copper still. What, you have a, what type of copper still do you use? It's a Muller copper pot still. 340 liters. A stunning piece of uh, engineering. Beautiful. <coughs> German. <coughs> German, absolutely. The best stills are. Uh, Carl, Holstein, um, the Muller, absolutely. Yeah. We've got a, a lot of copper surface area. And yeah. we're just trying to get as much copper contact between the spirit um, and the copper is possible to, to smooth it, to get rid of the fatty acids and the sulfates. So you buy the, the, the grain alcohol? We buy, what, what alcohol is it? Just it's, it's English wheat, yeah. distilled to 96% alcohol by volume. Yeah. And it really is a blank canvas. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all it is, it's just alcohol. We don't want any flavor from that base spirit. We yeah. want to add all the flavor from the botanicals. Um, and that, that, that's the starting point. We distill that through the copper pot still to give us uh, what we call the base gin a London dry gin that we then add. It's, it's very much the sort of the skeleton and the meat and the flesh comes from the vacuum still and the supercritical what, extraction. What uh, botanicals you use in this first destination? Program? Absolutely. So we've got um, Macedonian juniper, a bit stronger, a bit punchier. Italian juniper, uh, lovely sweetness to it. We've got English coriander, we've got licorice root, angelica root, orris root, very classical sort of gin botanicals. Um, We've got black currant leaf, black currant, not so traditional, but they add a nice sort of uh, citrusy, black currant-y note. Um, and, 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 you know, we kind of left holes in the recipe so that we could add more juniper uh, from the other, the mm-hmm. other, the other um, pieces of equipment. Nice. So then it's done, but you do a, you told me you do a one shit. A one shot. Sorry, one shot. One shot. We do one, one <laughs> shot. Absolutely. So we're not making a gin concentrate. Um, every... Uh, every bit of alcohol has been through the still. We're not we're not blending with neutral alcohol afterwards. You know what we the heart cut that we take, we then dilute with the water directly, and that's the base. We're not we're not back blending with neutral spirit. You know we do it in that one shot manner to just to get the best gin possible. Yeah. And then you take the liquor. So then that's the ABV of I don't know. So it comes off the still at about eighty eight percent. Yeah. We then blend it with our spring water yeah. to 45 percent yeah and then you bring it on and then you have this london dry gin with yes the, the base and then you you on the on the separate way you you do this with a vacuum still you do six different six different uh, distillates um and then we we've got a recipe that we know to blend it to blend it so we know how many liters we get from the base we yeah. know how many liters of the the, the lemon the the black currant the lovage to drop into and then it took us about 
you know, pretty much a year to get that recipe so that you what weren't... What did you do with all the rest of them? I mean, you, 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 you. <laughs> it's behind us. Okay, uh, okay. you, you I, did it in small amounts. It's small amounts. It was a fun year, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, we wanted a well-balanced gin. So, yes, we talk a lot about juniper, but there's so much more flavor to it. And it's got that lovely dry finish. We wanted that well. You know, we wanted lots of juniper, but we didn't just want to be slapped in the face with juniper. We wanted it to be well balanced and you do get a lovely dry finish uh, on the gin. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then on a separate machine, you have this super critical extraction where you put lots of pressure. Lots of pressure. You How much? Um, you told me you, it's like 800 grams. So we've got 800 grams giving us about 20 mils of extract. Oh, and it's, it's, the, it's the closest, you know, it's very much used in the perfume industry, this machine. And it gives you the closest representation to juniper. So it, it, it literally is like having actual juniper in the gin. Mm -hmm. you, you squeeze the berry, you smell it, and then you smell the oil, it's exactly the same. It's called the absolute. And, and you know, flavor archive houses use it. You know, if, if every juniper bush in the world dies, this machine gives you the closest representation to what juniper used to be. Mm -hmm. Nice. And it, 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 it's, it gives you flavors that you just can't get from distillation. Cool. So, this is apple gin. You came up with something kind of new. I'm not sure if it's like, but we also have a few bottles at Tender Spirits you sent us. Uh, the um, Douglas fir. The Douglas fir, absolutely. So we also have the same idea, like now you created these different steps of extracting flavor and now you bring in also, or you focus on other flavors like the Douglas fir. So that's a kind of, you call it flavored vodka? Uh, we, we, legally, legally, we have yeah, to call yeah. it a flavor vodka, but it's anything but a vodka. A vodka yeah. traditionally odorless, flavorless, you know, it's a neutral yeah. spirit. This is full of flavor. Um, and when we were using the vacuum still to do the Douglas fir, we, we were all the time were tasting everything. Mm -hmm. And we were just blown away by the Douglas fir that came off the vacuum still. Yep. It, you know, in the middle of uh, Northumberland, we've got this amazing tropical flavored notes coming through the pie, through the needles. It's not just pine, but it's just, it's melon, it's grapefruit, it's, it's incredible. And we just felt that it was too good not to develop as a drink. So we put the needles through the, through the copper pot. It's exactly the same sort of technique. Get the base and then build flavors on top of it. So we've got the pot stilled Douglas fir needles. We've got the vacuum stilled Douglas fir needles and the super critically extracted uh, Douglas fir needles as well. And we played around with the quantities, the di you know how much base, how much vacuum, how much CO2. And I, I think we're, we've got this drink that is um, it's full of flavors that that you wouldn't expect from Douglas fir. And it's a, it's a wonderful drink for bartenders to play around with. It, it gives people, um, it, you know, you can make twists and a classic drinks with it. And it just, it's something fun to play with, mm -hmm. but delicious at the same time. Cool. So that's the idea of maybe Happel distillery to fail. Let's see what we can on one side have here. Absolutely. And if we use our system, what can we uh, what, what, you know, but with the access to nature that we've got on our doorstep and the equipment that we've got in the distillery, the, the, the flavor possibilities are kind of endless. And we, we love to experiment and play around and Nick just creates wonderful drinks yeah. um, with the spirits that we make. So it's, it's, it's just fun, you know, it's, it's to, to create different flavors and Val goes out and picks something and we distill it and it's like, oh, that didn't work or yes, that works. It's just brilliant fun. Nice, nice. So can I ask you, What's your, why are you becoming a distiller? What's the, if uh, I'm allowed to ask Yeah, you. of course you are. I'm, um, I, I did uh, an engineering course, so chemical yeah. engineering. Uh, you know, oil and gas extraction, just not as much fun as, as whiskey and beer. Want to do some money? Uh, <laughs> I, there's, well, to begin with, yeah, absolutely. Money and travel, that's all I wanted to do. And then yeah. I, I did the course and I thought, oh God, this is not, this is not going to work for me. Um, so I thought, what, what's close to chemical engineering? And I did, uh, I found a brewing and distilling course up at Harriet Watt. And I learned how to make beer and whiskey. Mm -hmm. And, um, my, you know, very simple chemical engineering, separation of alcohol and water, very easy, um, but very fun. And, um, you know, I must have done the course about 13 years ago. Um, and then uh, a company called Sipsmith came along mm -hmm. and uh, I worked for them for, for four weeks as an intern and I didn't leave for five years and, and really saw the birth 
of uh, the new gin movement, you know, making gin how it should be made yeah. at Sipsmith, a very traditional London dry gin, left Sipsmith, you know, uh, still a massive fan of the guys, you know, good friends. And um, I thought I'll never make a gin in the north. And then I met, I met Walter and he, he showed so me the land. The story land. was you were moving from London to Exactly, Newcastle I moved to Newcastle. For for, well, we, we had, um, my wife, we had one child yeah. and my wife said to me, We'll have a second child. I was very much told. Yeah. And uh, when, when we have... Do you have three? <laughs> I have three now, yeah. yeah. I know, it's a great number. It's yeah. the magic number. Yeah. The triple technique, the three kids. Yeah. Um, and, and London just wasn't where we wanted to bring up children, yeah. you know. So we moved back to where my wife's from, Newcastle. And I yeah. thought there'll never be a small batch distillery in Newcastle. And, and then by circumstance, Val heard that you... Val, Val was at a party at Sipsmith. He was like, where's Chris? And uh, they said, oh, he's left. He's moved to Newcastle. Val was like, just hold my ming, drink ming, a second. Ming, 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 ming. I've just got to make a phone. Literally half past 11, he phoned me. Uh, Val, what, what, what? You know, when you get a call from Val, you're like... You know, it's, you, better it's, pick it up. you better pick it up. Yeah. As no matter how, no matter if you've you know been asleep for two hours. Oh, well, hi, hi. You got to meet Walter. You got to meet Walter. You got to see what we're doing. And I was like, Yeah, okay, cool. And I came so out. So they to started to build this without having a distiller. They they had the concept. Yeah. So they'd done some vacuum distillations on a little lab still. No, no. Um, Cabri, Cabri knew the, about supercritical extraction. Today. Exactly. He's, he's, he, the he's a biochemist, the, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I came out here, and it is the most beautiful place with. Uh, the botanical Eden, and then combined with the equipment and the, the the concept of putting juniper back at the heart of gin, but pioneering a new way of extracting more flavour. You know, sort of making a modern classic gin. Uh, I was like, yeah, okay, we've made a timeless classical gin in, in London with Sipsmith. Let's advance that. Let's get more juniper into the gin. Um, let's have a bit of fun, you know. And then, obviously, with Nick making the drinks and, and Val foraging the botanicals. It, it was, it's the dream team, you know. I have a question uh, because I think, maybe I'm wrong, maybe you can correct me, but I think like distiller has become a little bit more popular nowadays. So oh, absolutely. Maybe, there's maybe more people now into it because it sounds so, wow, we do a gin, we do whatever. But it's always interesting when I visit like small places like Apple. Technically, it's about in the beginning to be like very self-controlled because the idea is to do each day the same. Yes, it's a like more like a classic production. Absolutely, you have to make sure about. I mean, you need your consistency. You need your experience. You need to taste the raw material. You need to. But technically, it's more like because sometimes I feel a bit, there's a comparison to bartending when it became famous. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, yeah, I want to do cocktails, <laughs> but the business of bars is about making the same drinks each night, Absolutely. And be consisting, having a menu. It's not about super creative every night. There's exceptions. Yes. Uh, and I think it's the same, isn't it? For, I mean, it's, uh, but I mean, you grow up with it, you expected it like this. Uh, absolutely. You know, we, um, we've, we've got the gin. It took us a long time to develop the gin. Now it's about making sure that we harvest the needles at the right time. We harvest the green juniper at the right time. And it's about making sure that every bottle of Heppel is as good and as consistent as the first bottle. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of the day job, as it were. And then the fun side is developing drinks like the Douglas Fir, the Slow and the Hawthorne. We've got other drinks in the pipeline. But everything rests, you know, this is the bedrock. You know, yeah. that, that's uh, not the Holy Grail, but that is um, what it's all about is the gin. And that's what I, I love. I absolutely love gin, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Everything else is, is fun and it's all about taking drinks, extending them to the next level by using the triple technique to get more flavor out of the ingredients. Um, but you're absolutely right, making the gin consistent is, is the number one priority. And then, I mean, now you, I like the idea of what's Happel standing for. It's like bringing flavor from ingredients they grow you with a special technique in the bottle. Absolutely. And now you kind of, you, you have this Douglas fir I know some rumors about some other projects, but <laughs> I think it's the same idea. It's the same idea. It's absolutely... Very interesting things from here. Very unusual. It's very, I, th I really like what you guys do. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, cool. it's, it's fun, you know, and hopefully people enjoy the gin. And it is, um, it's a new way. It's a modern classic, which is 
uh, it's just very important to us that we take a classic uh, drink like the gin, we put more flavor into it, and it yeah. gives bartenders more options uh, to create better drinks with it as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Very cool. Thanks a lot. No, so thank I will, you. Uh, thank you. Try to catch a bow. Yes. Shot. Cheers. Hopefully not another drink. No, it's <laughs> lunchtime. Not even. It's eleven. It's, it's eleven. It's a perfect yeah. time for a for so a gym. Have a martini. With, okay. Thanks it's a, a tough job. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers.